Right, I'm the right way round now. Woo! <laughs> Let's put you in place. <clears throat> set up <coughs> <coughs> hello everyone welcome back we're the right way around now or at least I think I am <sighs> right just refresh on my computer bring you down a bit Hello, 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 hello. Right, I'll just wait for everyone to come back and join me again. Hiya, Sheila. Hi, Gail. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Carol. Hi, Sharon. Oh, no neighbours today. Can't have a chat with the neighbours today. Move that in a little bit further if you'll go. There we go. Yeah, sorry, it was the wrong way round. I wanted it, I wanted it landscape and not portrait. Hi, Jane. Have at it. Oh, have at it. What's your name? What's your real name? Junk journal. Junk journals with Gina B. Hi, Gina. <laughs> Dippy dappy doopy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, I can never remember the name of it. <laughs> oh dear. That that's my dibby dabby dooby in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> oh Sheila, don't you dare be singing why are we waiting? <laughs> Hi Angelica. <clears throat> I have to say, I think my computer's a little bit too far away from me. I'm struggling to read. I might have to bring it in a touch closer. That can clean my glasses, maybe. Let me move that into there. Ooh, that might get in the way there. Yeah, so you should be, Sheila. Huh. I sound better. Oh, good. <laughs> What do you mean by I sound better, Natalie? As in my voice sounds better. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to make a small start. I have a pile of stuff, as you can see, to the side of my... Now bear with, because I want to put that back under there. There we go. Okay, I want to just quickly give you a close-up of what I did last week. <coughs> oh, bless. Thank you. I feel silly calling you have at it. Love to know your real name. Okay, a quick recap on last week's. So... I managed to, to find another picture of actually of the roses. So in the magazine, that was, well, in fact, it was a much bigger image of the whole embroidery. And then they did a close up, which is the one that I used here. And so I chopped the big one down to form the diamond shape. But what I ended up doing, <coughs> just try and show you a close up here. So I ended up putting glossy accents on the hearts I did a, got, used a gold Posca pen for the faux stitching and this diddly diddly doodly and you see I know all the technical terminology <laughs> um, was using a white Posca pen and I just basically I drew some vines and some squirrels and then added some leaves onto it. Um, I also um, I used my peel off stickers my copper peel off stickers here which matched up with the hearts and then I'd got some sort of goldy colored 
sticky on thingies. Did some uh, Posca pen dots. Use the purple um, aquarella pens again to just blend in a little bit of colour so that it matched up with the pictures. Has anyone got any questions about about said images that I used and stuff or what have you? I actually watched through last week's and, and um, there were a couple of things that came up that I'm going to try and cover today. A couple of questions came up in the chat that I missed. So I'm going to try and cover those today. I was poorly last week, Natalie. Um, I'm, I'm, it's a, uh, how do I say it? Okay, I have a lifelong condition with regards to breathing. Um, so I'm asthmatic anyway, but I've also been diagnosed with another breathing problem called bronchiectasis. So when I say I'm poorly, what that means is that I'm having a bad day with the breathing because there's all sorts of different things can actually set it off. So um, it'll be the change in the weather, pollen, dust and fibres, tiredness, <laughs> all those sorts of things come into play. So when I say I'm, I'm not feeling great, it's not that I'm poorly and then I'm going to get better. It's just a, a lifelong thing. But it's just easier for me to say I'm poorly girl. So, but thank you, Natalie. I'm glad I sound a bit better anyway. Uh, not sure. Oh, hang on, let me have a read through. Uh, Joe. Hiya, Joe. Shan't remember, so you'll have to remind me. Uh, hiya, Sonia. Are you going to have those images in your shop soon? These were from a magazine. If that's what you're on about. Uh, yeah, these were from an embroidery magazine that I had. So that's the whole point of the glue book is to chop up old magazines and books and pages and stuff. Oh, snowy Calgary. Oh, that's not on, Sonia. We're into spring now. Snow should have gone by now. Oh, we're overcast here in York. Sorry, I'm just reading all the messages. It will melt again in a couple of days. More excuses to stay inside and craft well. Sounds good to me. Morning, Jackie. Nice to meet you. Okay, so I've done a quick recap of what we did last time. Um, I suppose I'd better tell you what we're doing this week, haven't I? So I've put up on the Facebook group that um, the prompt is on the shelf. Now, for those of you that are on YouTube, you know at the top you've got home, videos, playlists, channels and community. If you have a look under community, um, I occasionally post things on there as to sort of what's coming up and stuff. I don't want to do it all the time because I don't want to keep bombarding you because I know that some people use it and it just it, it's bombarding all the time and it's like, no, don't do it. Um, I've got enough on my plate with looking at Facebook and Etsy and YouTube and emails. So, uh, yeah, the last thing I want is to be bombarded with a load of stuff on community. So I occasionally put stuff in um, as a bit of a reminder that the uh, live is coming up. And if you are subscribed to my channel, then you will actually get a notification that I've put something in on the community page. Let's just have a read again. It'll melt again in a couple of days. Read that bit. Um, said hello to Joe and to Jackie. Oh, well, you're very lucky, Sheila, because there's no sun here today. It's very uh, overcast. In fact, I've even had the central heating on this morning. Cold and windy in Essex. My son is the same brilliant eyes and his voice is so deep just now with it breaking. We try not to laugh too much, yeah. I shouldn't laugh too much either because laughing sets me off too. Um, and I think it always sounds like I've had like 50 fags or something, you know. And uh, no, that happened. Uh, 
especially Carol, you had better not come to my house if you have problems with dust. Well, I don't do any dusting here, uh, for the simple fact I don't want it in the air. <laughs> so I'm all right, so long as you haven't dusted. If it's settled, it's fine. <coughs> Hi, Michelle. Glad you were able to make it and not off shooting off to go and cook your Sunday lunch. Right, okay, let's, let's get down to it. I'll try and keep up as much as I can with the chat, but it is a, a touch difficult and I'm doing a lot of hand waving, I've noticed. Okay, right, on the shelf. So basically, when I was going through all my magazines and stuff, I came across this page of items on a shelf. And as I've been going through all my magazines and finding images and things, I thought that would look lovely sort of sat on a shelf. So I thought to my little self, I know what we'll do this week, we'll do on the shelf. So I thought that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the shelves and then I'm gonna cut out bits and pieces to stick on to the shelves themselves, okay? So that's the idea is that we'll make the shelves and then we'll cut out images to then stick onto the shelves. Now it doesn't have to be crockery, as you'll see soon. Um, and I've got a couple of other ideas uh, with regards to the shelf themselves. But what I wanted to start with was no elves. <laughs> now I'm not doing elf on the shelf, but if you want to do that, there's no reason why you can't. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a background to show that it was the wall, so to speak. So I went through my wallpapers, pulled this bit out. And um, whilst I'd got patterned wallpapers, I thought if it's cut out and stuck onto the page, I don't know if I'm going to recognize the fact that that is actually wallpaper. Now, my dad, bless his little cottons, I had a thing about anaglypta wallpaper but he used to have the plain white and then paint it um but yeah he definitely had a thing about anaglypta wallpaper because he was like doesn't show up any lumps and bumps well he didn't say it with a yorkshire accent actually he said it with a brummie accent but in my stash i've got this wallpaper which has got like this blue stripe running through it and i thought well i didn't want it too raised because otherwise I'm going to find it difficult to stick things onto it and then the pattern not showing through. And I'm not sure that I wanted the blue. So I actually thought to my little self, I'm actually going to flip it over and I'm going to use the back side because now the pattern is depressed. So it means that sort of it's embossed into the paper. And so it, although it's still textured, it gives me a slightly flatter surface to work with whereas on the front where it's it's sticking up here it's actually textured and so that's why I thought I'll just use the back and it gives the impression of something in the background all right so that's my thought process for that let me move that big book for just a minute we'll come back to you shortly okay so I want to make a start on this because, oh, went the yeah, X there, it's okay. I thought I'd lost it, the original image. So if you want to get all technical minded, could use embossing folder if no wallpaper. You could, Maury, you could. Um, if you want to get all technical minded about your shelving, all right. If we have a, a closer look at this, if we have a look at the top shelf, it's got a pale colour and then a darker colour. Because it, if you imagine that the sun is shining from, well, it's actually coming from this sort of angle. No, it's coming from this sort of angle. Whatever you see at the front will be paler. Whatever is shadowed will be underneath. Now, if we have a look at the middle shelf, it's just a plain strip. Of cream and then if we have a look at the bottom shelf you'll notice that the actually is that yeah it's maybe a head-on um the top part of the shelf is dark and then the edge of the the shelf is cream so 
I went through my equity papers and these were three that I picked out for last week's project and I ended up not using them but I thought to my little self so that could be the front strip of the three shells that could be the underneath of this one and this could be on this shelf here so it with it being the three shades of brown it gives me the deception i suppose of it being a shelf with shadows it might not look that way when it's done but we'll see how it goes so let me put those to one side because i want to stick my wallpaper on first so first of all i need to cut it down to size so i'm just going to scissors there page there in fact i'll tell you what we'll do i'm going to sit it underneath the page so it wants to be lined up with my holes and there and then i can use that page as a guide for cutting it out awake hacking into my page now Maybe I can straighten it up with my paper trimmer in a minute. I want hey up escaping. Me dibby dabby doobies escaping. So I'm gonna do a second one because I want to do a double page spread again. So roughly there. This background might not work, but you know, if it doesn't work I can just cover it up with a load of stuff that I can put on my shelf, can't I? Ooh, nippy little things. What are you on about, girl? Uh, so I just got my first Tim Holtz 3D embossing folder yesterday. I have something coming up shortly with embossing folders. Um, I'm going to be... Now I've finished the um, mini album workshop. I, uh, I've got some stamping up projects that are coming very soon as well as some other new stuff once I've finished the Country Diary Journal. Let's say this is very sort of rough, but... Just check size-wise. Okay, so a bit more trimming off, I think. So I think I'm gonna get my paper trimmer out. Put that on there. Yeah, wallpaper samples are good, Sheila. Okay, this might not cut through this paper very well. Let's have a look, see what it does. Ooh, a bit jagged around the old edges there. Okay, a bit off the top. <coughs> There will be times as well when I, when I go quiet, when I'm consecrating. What's Michelle done that was drastic? I think I will take my, my wallpaper off the walls. <laughs> what you could do, Michelle, is take a photograph of it, print it off, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Get rid of that fluff. Don't like fluff. Am I about the right size now? Yeah, it's as near as damn it is to swearing. Okay, let me trim this one down. Want it the same size, preferably Carol. Ooh. 
made myself a brew. That's not on. Can someone pop over and put the kettle on, please? I'll have to go and make myself a brew in a bit. Okay. I need to stick those circles in place. Okay, decks are clear. That way up. Now I'm actually going to use my collar glue rather than my print stick to glue this onto the page. Let's see if this is strong enough to hold. Might not be. No, I don't think it's going to be. Okay. Let's use my tacky glue. Don't have any wallpaper paste to hand. Come on, there we go. Come on, glue, are you coming out or not? I don't think this glue's coming out to play. You can just declog. Ooh, big bit of clog in there. Come on. You know, this is the nice thing about the lives, is that um, if I was doing a recorded video to upload, you, you wouldn't stand me doing all of this, would you? You might not stand me doing it now, but I can get away with it more. Okay, try again. Yes, we've got glue. There we go. Now I'm going to put plenty on because I want to make sure that I've got good contact with it being dimensional paper. So I'm going to smother it. Yeah, the um, stamping up one. Apparently it's being discontinued. Paper trimmer that is. There's a few people not happy about it. Okay, so as you can see, I glued that one and then I've left it because I just want that glue to go off a little because I put so much on. If any of you watched my glue video. I think I talk about it on there. Uh, just leaving it to form that little bit of a skin over the top so that when I apply some pressure, it's not going to go oozing out everywhere. Did you notice that came with sound effects? I'll turn it that way around because I want that flower in the middle that way up. Okay. Let's make sure I've got it on my page correctly. Yeah, happy with that. I'm going to put too much pressure on at the minute. I'm just going to leave it to go off a little. Put the same on this side. In some ways, this isn't a true glue book because a, a, what I what I personally would class as a true glue book you're just cutting out images and sticking them in um, into a book but I like the effect of creating a design an image a picture from other pictures so because if I think if I was just cutting out magazine pages and images and just sticking them in the book willy-nilly I think that'd be a bit boring okay so I'm just going to let that set off. So I'm going to put that to one side for a minute. But actually it does look like wallpaper, doesn't it? You might not be able to see it so much. I mean, I know it is wallpaper, but it looks like a papered wall. That's better. Okay, let's cut some strips for shelves. 
what sort of width do I need them? Let's have a look. So my page is six and one quarter inches. Now what depth to cut them at? That's the thing. So let's do six and a quarter inches for each sheet. So at least I know the length's right. And I've got a crease in this one, but I'm not going to fuss about that because uh, there's going to be stuff sat on it anyway. So, six and a quarter. And this, this one's definitely wrinkled because it's two pieces of paper stuck together. But as I say, I'm not, I'm not going to fuss about that. Okay. Now then, what depth? What depth shall I have my shelves? An inch, do you think? Let's have a look at that. Sorry, I don't know whether you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just contemplating doing an inch shelf. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Let's try it. Let's try one, see what it looks like. Hang on, I need a straight edge first. Let's cut that so it's straight. So this is where I don't get to keep up with chat because I'm so busy looking down at this and you're all writing stuff and uh, I don't know what the heck you're writing. You could be writing things like, geez, isn't that cover rubbish? Okay. Ooh, look, I can just get three shelves. might be a touch too wide okay let's do <sighs> let me just think maybe half an inch will do let's do three quarters of an inch So uh, the bottom shelf, the dark is on the top. Middle shelf doesn't really have any dark and the top shelf has the dark underneath. I don't think that I'm going to get the illusion of it being a shelf. To me that looks just like strips. And I think it's because these need to be angled to get the full effect. Hmm. Just do like the fronts of the shelves. So I want one more strip. By the way, ladies, I've just um, been to have a look at the Works website for those that are in the UK. Um, and they've got a 25% off over uh, £10 orders today. And also, they're selling a lot of Crafters Companion products. Uh, you know, like the Centura Pearl paper and... Um, what was the other thing I noticed? Some of their uh, equipment and they've got some new ink pads on there. And 
what was the other thing? Uh, if someone can tell Jeanette Logan, she, uh, there's a unicorn kit on there now as well. There's a couple of really, really nice paper pads on there. Um, but yeah, they've got the Crafter's Companion stuff on there. I think that I'm going to leave my shelves to just be the strip fronts. What do you all think? Because as I say, I don't think I'm getting the full effect with them just being strips. I think they need to be angled. Ooh, should I angle one? Angle one. Maybe that's better, the angle. Yeah, I think that's what it does. I think the angles are giving the perspective, aren't they? <coughs> now it's further said the the light one is the front. Is that third one gone? So what did I say? The darks underneath. smaller I think the other thing is I think they're too wide okay I can't be bothered to get the paper trimmer out again let's just cut it down this way shells to make them more prominent I think still don't look like shells Turn the top dark one over, that one, and have it at the top, you mean. You see, the thing is, when you look at the actual image, the dark is coming from underneath. Whereas on this one, the dark is on the top. So, what do you all think? Tell you what, whilst you're all having a think and putting some comments on, that's okay, Lynn, don't worry. Um, I'm just going to put the kettle on. Turn me bake spuds off. So what do you think girls? Do you think just the dark brown for the shelves? The cream for the shelves? Or should I do the shading? It's 
So that's a year. The thing is, I can't leave them till later morning because, like on here, with this being the top of the shell, there's going to be things sat on top of that. I'll tell you what I think in a minute. I just want to see what you all think. Dark brown for the shells, then colour the shading. Anyone else? Any thoughts? having the kitchen in my workroom or my workroom being where the kitchen is <laughs> dark shelf better on its own more in pants the light one is too light not enough contrast Sheila making it look like a bookshelf with sides may help too I think but once you've filled your shelves it's easy to see what's wrong okay I've made my decision I'm actually going to scrap these because I think the light is way too light and I think the dark is way too dark so I'm going to use the medium brown and I'm just going to have a shelf front because I think trying to be clever, trying to be a smarty pants and create shading, I think is uh, maybe a touch too much. And I think that I like the three quarters of an inch shelf. Now, one of the things I was going to suggest that for you for you guys, if you decide to have a go at doing this one, is you have the option of doing what I'm doing here, which is the strips of paper to create the look of a shelf. And the other thing that you could do is if you've got, say, an IKEA magazine or any other furniture magazine, you could actually cut out a bookshelf from the catalogue. Or any other piece of furniture you so wish now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to ink these up but I am going to cut them with the angles on so that will help to give the illusion of it being dimensional and I think that that is going to be for a glue book ample sufficiency so that's my decision that I'm going to do. But again, what I like to do is I like to make you sort of look at it so that you can have some thought processes of when you come to do your own. Then it sort of gives you an idea of what you should be looking at. So whilst I ask for your advice or your thoughts, don't mean I'm always going to follow it. It's just to sort of make you go through the process of it, really. Because that's me. I like to do that. As many of you will have seen, if you do any of my tutorials or any of my workshops, you'll notice I don't always hand it to everyone on a platter. I like you to have a little think about these things. Because at the end of the day, once you get off here, you're on your Jack Jones and you've got to, to go through the process on your billy, so. So 
as I say, there's no reason why you can't cut up any kind of furniture magazines. I mean, everything that we're going to add onto the shelves anyway is going to be all out of proportion. So obviously stuff's not going to be printed to the size of the, the shelves that we've created. Which way around am I going? I'm going that way. Okay, so I'm going to glue them on. my tacky glue again because of the uh, dimensional paper. And I'm going to stick that right on the bottom. The other nice thing about um, this particular prompt is that you don't um, have to fill your shelves up all in one go. So each time you come across something new, you could cut it out and add it onto your shelves. I think I might have done that a touch too high, but not to worry. I can put taller stuff on the bottom one, can't I? Okay, so I think it was Maureen was asking me last week what weight of paper um, it was in, in my journal, in my book. Um, and I think it's round about 110, 120 GSM. It's quite a sturdy paper actually. Um, but if you're using much thinner paper, uh, I would actually see about gluing the pages together to make them slightly more sturdy. If you're using an actual reading book, um, then I would definitely stick pages together. But I have to say I'm quite impressed with how these pages are holding up to all the uh, all the liquid stuff that's being added to them. Okay, so that's my shelves. That's going to be my shelves on my page. Okay, put that to one side again. Have a slurp of tea. Okay, so I want to show you some of the images that I'm going to use. So I found these two magazines pages of perfume bottles. So I'm going to add those but not onto my shelves because the other thing that I found was in a, a stenciling decoupaging decorating book. I found this picture with this piece of furniture on and so what I thought I would do is I'm going to cut the picture off here and I'm going to add that onto this side. So I've got bookshelves here and then I've got a piece of furniture over there. So I might add some of the perfume bottles onto here. I might add say the bigger one onto the um, cabinet. But this is where I said have a look at furniture magazines or you know furniture decorating magazines and see what you can come up with but I quite liked the ideas of the perfume bottles sat on the shelves now the other thing that I wanted to show you was this is one of the albums that I've been collecting and collating some of my uh, magazine images in just turn that round I don't want to knock that over hang on put that under there so those are my full pages I need to sort through. So I found this, um, this image of the cake tins, which I thought could look quite nice on a shelf. And then this is going to be a bit difficult because this protrudes out a bit. Let me just see if you can see all of that, if I tilt it at an angle. Yeah. So you can see how I've been collecting all my images and putting them in this photo album now sometimes when you put them in these old photo albums it depends how tacky you know you feel this back and this is tacky it depends on how tacky this is 
I don't they're not intending to stay in here for long because I don't want them to when I lift them up to rip so this is just a a temporary storage place but it gives you an idea of some of the images that I've been collecting but I thought that basket would be quite nice maybe I could sit that down by my um by my little yeah let's take that out because I think that that would look nice if I cut that out and sit that down here yes liking that I'll have you out work I'm wrecking the joint now oh what was I saying about it sticking <laughs> come on out you come mummy's got a new home for you Hang on, poke it up. There we go. Yeah, I think that looked good down there. Yep, love you. Okay. This is the page I was looking for. So, can you see here, look, I've got teapots and teacups. So I thought I'd use those to start stacking on the shelves as well. Come on, help you come. I know you like it in there and it's nice and warm. And he's got a new home for you. anything else well I think that's it for this book yeah like pages in the rest okay oh that's that on the floor right let's make a start now then someone asked in um i think it was last week's and as i say i missed the question when it came up on chat it's like everything that you're chatting about now i uh i'm not watching i can't see it so occasionally i do miss questions so i try and go through so work my paper punch falling on the floor um someone asked me about using why I use my big scissors or do I find it easier to use my big scissors for when I'm fussy cutting as opposed to it's glue skin um, as opposed to my small scissors for fussy cutting and I think it's because I started off with my big ones that you know it's just what I do but also I find that because I'm continually using this part of the blade here I'm not using the tips I've got a longer blade to work with because I'm only closing them like fractionally each time as I'm actually cutting. So can you see like, whereas if I was using the smaller scissors and then at this point I would stop and then open them again and start again. Um, whereas if I was using the small scissors, obviously the length of the blade isn't quite as long. And I think that these are for finer fussy to cutting. So like if I was cutting out the shape of a leaf, I would snip into the shape of the um, leaves. Whereas where I'm cutting round things like this, I can get a better visual on the, um, on the actual image. And because I'm only cutting, sh shutting the blades, I should say, a tiny bit each time, then I've got, a longer period to cut with so I hope that that answers that question and I don't think the lady that asked the question is watching this week so I'm hoping she might sort of catch up with that but that's just my personal preference everyone's gonna have their own their own thing Now I'm not cutting it right out on the edge of the image. I'm trying to leave a little bit of a board around it as well. So 
Sorry, this is where I will go quiet now as I'm pussyfooting out. Ta-da! I'm a little teapot, short and stout. My teacup. Well, I've got two teapots the same. One on one shelf, one on the other. Of course, the other thing that I thought of as well um, is in one of the magazines and it was in the first video that I did or the first live that I did um, it had books in the background so you can see the spines of the books so I might add some of those I might actually get that image out of the magazine and uh, add the books maybe on the bottom shelf So, let me just ask, let me just take a break a second, just have a, a bit of a read. Um, tick me up and pull me out. Yeah. Uh, what do you think that you'll put on your shelves? Or is it a wait and see what you can find? Don't cut me spout off now. Spin, 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 spin. Ooh. Nearly did. Thought of a vase of flowers as well. I could come across a vase of flowers. I could cut that out and put that on. Right, let me stick you up there. Where's me? Where's me doings? <sighs> Teddy bears. You see, I think it'd be nice with handbags on as well. I haven't. I found a, um, when I was looking through this morning. I found. Um, found a load of handbags and I thought oh should I I thought no shoes would be another one I thought shoes would be quite good on the shelf photograph frames and then uh, put uh, pictures inside the photograph frames I don't know if this glue is going to be strong enough but let's have a look Uh, can you all stay over there, please? Thank you. What was that about, Sharon? I'm doing shelves on a garden wall. That's nice. like that idea. Plants, yeah. Baskets, books. <laughs> Need a whole book for books. <laughs> you don't have to put every book on it, Sheila. <laughs> just needs to be representative of. Should we just put together and, and get Sheila a library? I love them all. Yeah, but you don't have to use your actual books though, Sheila. Just 
the spines. Anyway, you get the gist, don't you? And I obviously need to find a lot more things to put on my shelves. But I thought that that sort of made a bit of a start. I might add you. No, I'll tell you what, let's just have a go at doing this, this shelfy bit. The other thing that I could do is I could actually colour this background in slightly. So it's, it looks a slightly darker shade to give the illusion of uh, perspective as well. In fact, I could cut out that basket and put them on my shelves. Right, you go up at an angle. Okay, so do I leave it as it is? Or should I cut round? I'm gonna cut round the shape because I can put that vase on there as well. Okay. Well, let's follow the line of the floorboards. sit down there. I'm going to cut that vase up and put the vase on there. And I'm going to cut this basket of flowers and put that on there I think. Okay let me stick this on. I'm thinking of cutting this away. Yeah no because I said did not I've got my basket of my basket could sit there cover some of that over. Right, let's stick the whole thing on. Look at you lot having a nice little chin wag amongst yourselves. <laughs> Anyone would think you was here to enjoy yourselves. I do feel silly sitting here laughing at myself though. Oh, getting a clag. In fact I feel silly sitting here talking to myself. If anyone was looking in through my windows they'd be like, what's that mad woman up to? Mummy, why's that lady talking to herself? Flowers, is it, Carol? Is it a basket of? Oh, it's a basket with a bag in it. I think I'm going to have great fun reading through chat later on. up a couple of these perfume bottles. I think I'm going to cut out the Coco Chanel one. 
because it's all out of proportion and looks odd. Yeah, birdcage would be good. Cat. Oh, bye Sheila. Who's going? Oh, your battery's running out. Okay, Sheila, see you later, alligator. Oh, the other thing I could do is put some lace on the edge. Be one of those ladies that has the lace on the edge of her shelves. And remember that even though this is out of proportion and looks all odd, it's meant to a little bit. In some ways, it's meant to look that little bit sort of crazy where it's not all perfect because otherwise I might as well just cut out the picture and leave the basket of flowers on there and leave the vase on it so it's meant to look a little bit odd and peculiar a touch too big look it overhangs the edge maybe if I sit it at the bottom yeah. oh after all that can't even sit it on there I have to put you on a different page I'm gonna do this one because this is smaller it's a bit of a bummer might do another shelf page as well because I think there's lots of things that uh, you could sit on a shelf so yes yeah, so I don't think it's meant to look like homes and gardens these Who was that, Gina? She got me laughing so hard in a conversation on Facebook that my brew went up my nose. What? <laughs> what are you lot chatting about? Me? <laughs> chatting about... Oh, and I missed it. <laughs> she can stick them on the window so when she feels lonely just look up and we're on about me again <laughs> and here's the house where the crazy crafting lady lives <laughs> I'll have to tell your bus tours to um, bring the tourists round via my house so that they can all give me a wave as they go by and this is the, this is the York Minster, a very historical building, and this is Crafty, what is it, Crafty Crazy Carol's House. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Yeah, thanks, call yourself friends. <clears throat> that one too big. Oh, no, that one will fit. I like the Tom Ford packaging, I like that. I think we might have Prada on there too. Oh God, could you imagine if I owned a cat as well? What would that be then? Crafty, crafty, crazy, no, crazy, crafty, cat lady. Actually, hang on. Crazy. I'm not crazy. Crazy, I'm crazy for calling you Carol. I love that song as well, and I can't do it justice because I'm rubbish at singing. Just a 
touch too big again. Boom. Oh well, I'm just going to have to have that top bit just sticking out a touch. Let's just try it on the bottom shelf. Yeah, too big on the bottom shelf. I do like it on there. Coach. Prada. Prada Coach. Coach is smaller. Let's go with Coach. Yeah, good old Patsy Klein. Love a bit of Patsy. Well, my singing can't have been that rubbish then if you recognise that that was a Patsy Klein song. You could do a bathroom um, set of shelves, couldn't you? And have things like stacked towels on it and hand lotions and toilet rolls. That'd be classy. In that right we're having you want where's my sheet gone thinking I'm going to cheat. I'm sorry Mr Ford but your bottle is going to be smaller. That's better. Don't tell will you? decided ladies that um, I'm growing my grey hair out. I've always been a brunette and um, the grey started coming in thick and fast a few years ago and I've been dying it ever since. The thing is though is that because of all the colour that I've got on my hair it's very it's like three levels at the moment so like the top of my head is gray then it goes to a light brown and then it goes to a dark brown at the bottom and i'm fed up of every month having to dye my hair and in fact it's about every three weeks now i'm having to dye my hair and uh, so i've decided it's kind of time to grow old gracefully so, um, so I'm growing it out and of course it's at that horrible mid stage. So as I say, my hair is like three shades of colour at the moment and it looks hideous. But I have got to live with it if I'm going to grow it out. Um, because it's not ready yet to have the stuff on it to uh, get rid of all the dye. And my brother's bought all the stuff for me to be able to do it. Well, he's going to do it when he comes up to visit. Um, so I'll be going paler shortly whenever he gets up here. But you know when your hair is like, oh, you might not be old enough to know this, to have grey hair, but um, when it's at that midway stage, it's a bit embarrassing because it's no neither now nor summit stage. It's not very pleasant. 
visually it's not very pleasant. Okay. Gonna put you on that shelf. Ooh, do I keep that? I might do. Well, Yeah, unfortunately I'm not silver streaks. I have literally gone grey all over. Um, so it's not even coming through as, you know, a few hairs here and there or a few streaks here or there. It's just, it's grey. And uh, so that's why I'm deciding to, to see about growing it out. And I think that that's why it looks awful because it's not. You know, sometimes people can grow out their hair and they get a little bit here and a little bit there and it starts to grow, to grow through. But, um, yeah, mine's grey all over. So it looks dreadful. Okay. I want some books on that bottom shelf. So, if I remember rightly, I saved... No, not you. Not you. There we go. Look, some of these books here would look lovely on my shelf, wouldn't they? And don't go looking up mucky magazines again, Gail. <sighs> looking for the love. Yeah, you see how on these shelves look? See how it's black in the background? think that I might have to do a bit of that in the background to uh, to create that effect so let's chop you off right well, let's curve yeah so it gives the illusion again that it's a three-dimensional object So, now this is where, this is the bit where I would actually use my small scissors because it's, um, it's very fine and fiddly and so my big scissors wouldn't, they'd be just too big to get in there and uh, cut it up as I want. This might not work. I might decide not to use them. Actually, no, I think that looks all right, and especially if I have some of the smaller ones on there too. Let's get rid of a bit of rubbish. So you see, look, there's these. Or those. Hmm. I think, maybe. Maybe, baby. So again, I'm just going to round. I'll give the illusion of it being rounded. In fact, if I put them there, because I could find something that looks like a bookend, which could go there. Sorry, I'm just thinking as I'm cutting. And then I could use something as a bookend at that end. Okay. Oh, he's going, Gina. Bye, Gina. I'm nearly done anyway, ladies. So um, but I just want to show you something else before I do shoot off. So I just want to show you a couple of things, really. OK, 
Anyway, you kind of get the idea of what I mean by sort of, you know, on the shelf. So yes, yeah, so I thought it'd be quite interesting if we all made little shelves in our books and then um, added things onto them or even bits of furniture and adding things onto them. So, obviously this is going to be like any of the other pages. Once I get off here, I will have a play myself and um, do some more to it. <coughs> but you get the idea. Bye, Lynn. Um, but at least you get the idea of what I mean now by on the shelf, okay? So you can make shelves just with strips, you can cut out bits of furniture and then cut out any other little bits and pieces that you can then add onto your cabinets or your shelves, all right? So that's, that's number one. <coughs> number two, do you remember um, I did a page that had a green scenery? And I just stuck the page on and I said, I'm sure I'll think of something for that later on. Yeah, well, I did. So here's what it looks like. Also, last week I showed um, there was some strips of paper that I'd got with little tiny images on. And so I stuck those onto card and then um, so I cut them out, stuck them onto card and then stuck the card onto the image. And then I'll just show you close up. So here were some words from the magazine and then I punched out some butterflies, covered them with stickles so they're all glittery. Um, but yeah, so this was the background and then I've added these other images on top. So uh, that I won't actually cover in a live because I think it's fairly self-explanatory um, about that. So if you want to go on to do other pages, then you can do. So that's that one and then where do I put it? Oh, it's over here. <coughs> Hang on a minute. So, um, we've been doing a, a mini album online workshop. And I will be doing a flip through very shortly for everyone to see of the actual mini album. But the workshop is still available if anybody wants to do it. And this is the mini album that I created. So, and it's all with PDFs and uh, video tutorials. And it's going to be available still to join into the workshop until the 4th of May. So you've only got a few days really left to um, just, what is it, about a week um, if you want to join in with the online workshop. And I used my Graphic 45 papers for this one. But you can use whichever papers you want. So, um, so yeah. So that's what the mini album looks like. But I will be doing a, a full flip through um, for YouTube. So everyone who's on the online workshop will have already seen the inside of this. But I'm not going to show you now. So... So I guess I'm about done because I can smell that my baked potatoes are now done as well for my lunch. And I hope that watching me do my on the shelf glue book pages has given you a bit of an idea of what you're going to do with yours. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you all come up with. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much. Um, one of the other things I wanted to say was that um, if ever you create something from one of my video tutorials if you have a youtube page and you share it on there please let me know because i'd love to come and have a look um or if you belong to any groups and you post it onto any of the groups um if you give the youtube my youtube channel as a, as a bit of a mention <coughs> of people to come along and come and have a look at the tutorials for themselves so that they could have a go at doing one and that would be much appreciated. I'm kind of thinking, you know, a little cat laid down here. And I don't like cats. I'm not a cat lover. But a little cat or a little puppy laid down there would be quite nice. Right, okay. I'm going to go and drink my cold cup of tea. Thank you very much for uh, joining me again, ladies. I'm going to have a read through all the chat in a minute. And... Um, if there's any questions that obviously I've not seen, I'll try and answer them in next week's catch up and uh, I'll see you all again soon.
Bye. Tra. Bye. <laughs> now I've got to find the X now to switch it off.